In this video, we're going to make a simple, traditional sawhorse. Okay, I always think that this is one of my best carpentry tools, especially if you're doing site work. Always have a pair of them, um, so you can stack timber between them. Stable, um, and they're the perfect height for any kind of handwork. So if you're sawing, you can put your knee on them, your knee and your body weight. It's a great clamp to hold wood still. You can um, use the full length for the saw without touching the floor. They're really stable as well, although the floor here is a little bit rocky. Um, you can see how stable it is. You can stand right on the end and it not um, tip over. This one has seen better days. It's getting a little bit wonky now. And I've decided it's time to build some new ones. And I also thought that'd be a great starter project uh, to do for my YouTube channel. Okay, so traditionally, I guess they probably would have used whatever they had to hand. It wants to be dry. Ideally, you want some dry wood so that um, it's not going to shrink and then start to rock. Um, what we do with the sawhorse is actually in that one, you can see why it's so firm even at this age, because it's been left out in the rain. Um, that really helps kind of keep, keep the joints tight and together. So whenever it kind of dries up a bit, chuck it out in the rain for a few days, it tightens it back up. Um, I'm going to be using, uh, I've got a piece here somewhere behind there, a piece of um, six for two I'm going to rip down now, um, which is joinery quality, kiln dried stuff. Admittedly, probably a bit of a, a bit of a decadence for it. You could use some four for two and some three for two. Um, just make sure it's dry. You ideally, like what they used to do is try and find a nice old piece out of what we used to do, even try and find a nice old piece out of a house that was dry. I think that's what that one was made out of, um, some old stud work. And then you could, um, you know it was dry, you could make it and you knew it wasn't going to shrink anymore. So I'm going to get some of this, plane it down, and then in the next step, you'll see me with the finished timber ready, which is going to be some 4 by 2 and some 3 by 2 or there or thereabouts. Okay, so I've got the wood here. This is enough wood here for two saw horses, and it's obviously quite nice, planed all around wood. Your wood doesn't have to be this good. It can just be off the shelf, 4 by 2 and 3 by 2 if you wanted. This measures 95 wide, 45 deep, and the legs are... A little bit smaller than I wanted, but it doesn't really matter. They worked out at 66 by 45. So um doesn't matter too much, really. It does, 45 mil, it kind of affects the geometry that we're going to use, but there are ways of working it out. So I've got one of my books from my apprenticeship here, the Manual of First and Second Books Carpentry. And I thought, oh, I wonder how they made a, a sawhorse. Or they call it a saw stool. And there's four pages of uh, different ways of doing it. It's quite a good apprentice project especially to work out the geometry of um, getting the, the right splay on the legs and the cuts. It was a really good way of kind of, um, you know, practical math and application. We are not going to do that. We're going to do a really simple way that um, the guy that trained me, Andy, what he taught me to do. Um, we've got a little bit bigger than his. He normally goes, um, so he always says to me, when you build a sawhorse, it's two foot six, six inches in, half inch all the way round. So that means I've got a little bit bigger. So these are a little bit longer than two foot six. It means we're going to step in six inches and then we're going to give it half inch splay one way and then half inch splay the other way when we cut the legs. And that will give us roughly the right kind of geometry of what we're looking for. Then we'll plate it. And you can see here, so I've taken my old sawhorse apart and uh, you can see what we've got to do to the legs. And uh, we're going to do a half inch housing on the top to start with. So. It's fairly simple, but I'll bring the camera in now and we'll zoom in and show how we're going to lay this first bit out on the top uh, for the housings. Okay, we're going to keep this dead simple. Uh, no point overcomplicating it. Just got a square, some rulers, pencils and stuff. So we're going to come in six inches or 150 mil. And if you're old or new money, it doesn't make much odds at this stage. And then we'll square that across. We're also square it down the one side for now. And then what we're going to do, we're going to measure on this bottom now. Oh, make sure we explain the right way. Going outwards, we're going to add on half an inch. Then, using the bevel, we'll set a bevel. Between that line and the top line. So that's half inch splay then. And we'll tighten that up. This bevel is three parts useless. I'm going to get a different bevel. Okay, so we've got the half inch mark. 
set forward, and then we're going to set a bevel. from the line we just made to the first six inch mark back. So this one's at five and a half inches, this one's at six inches. Lock it off, flip it over, and we'll mark the same on the other side. Actually, I didn't mark that one. Then get the width of the leg, and what we'll do is we'll make sure we cut slightly inside these lines. And we'll, we'll lie it on top in line with that line there. And we'll just flick a line across the back. Do the same on the other side. Obviously going the other way. If you can see that. Flick a line on the other side. So that's the width of the leg there. Then we'll go back here onto the top. We'll square. This line across it should be square and then we're going to mark in with a combination of square our half inch housing on the top And on the other side as well. And we'll do the same on the bottom. We need to just draw, pinch those lines up as well. And then that is our waste wood to take out for these housings. Okay, to cut these housings, you can put them in a vise. I've just got a bench hook here, and as long as we're pushing tight against it, we'll be able to cut fine. Just gonna use a tenon saw, just a cheap disposable one. And we're just gonna start it steadily, keep your thumb, against where it's going to go, move it away once you've started the saw. And we're just, like I said, we're just going to be ever so slightly inside the line. And although this isn't a piece of furniture, come down and see where you're going. We want it to be quite a tight joint. Um, because although it's held good with screws, ideally the kind of the friction of the two bits of wood is what we really want to hold it together. Then the other side. Just start on the front or the back. And when you cut level across, you know you've got it. And what I'm going to do is put in probably three or more, four more cuts there and make it nice and easy. Chop out with a chisel. So, there we've got a series of cuts. And it'll make it nice and easy now. A nice sharp chisel. Um, I'll pack that up and we can not chisel that out. So, 
So your tools don't have to be super fancy. Old CK chisel, kind of car boot buy for a couple of quid. These black handle ones are great. Same with the blue handle marples as well. I think this is a CK one, um, inch one, really good steel. Really nice chisel. And we'll just start, we'll start away from the line to start with. Just clear it off. And flip it over, don't go all the way through from the one side. And then we can start working back closer to the line. Come up to the line now. Then once you've taken the bulk out, just tidy it up with your chisel. Might just have to go down the edges slightly. That looks fine to me. So that's our first housing. Obviously you can tidy that with a little router plane or even with a router if you wanted to. Um, but I'd say that's probably good enough for what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna repeat this now three more times. Give me all the housings. Make sure they're splaying the right way. You don't want any legs splaying inwards. Uh, it won't make it for a very stable horse. So get that done and then we can look at doing the, whole, the, doing the legs. So I don't know if you can see, there's no gap. So that's fairly tidy. And you can see here with the six inch overlap, if you do a straight line there, that's gonna be roughly where we're going to um, with the legs. So let's skip to the next bit and start cutting some legs up. Right, so let's talk about the legs. So as you can see, we've got quite a complicated little cut. And there is lots of interesting geometry that we could use to do it, but we're not. We're just gonna do it really simply. Um, so I'm gonna bring the camera in now and we're gonna have a look at kind of how we're gonna rough this out um, and get it so that we can get four legs the same with the same splay and we can do it consistently each time. I've cut one leg. Slots in nicely. As you can see, you've got a nice joint there, down there, and across the top. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's a sawhorse. And what we've got is this nice shelf here, um, which this can push down against. And then when we put it together, finally, we will put some screws in there and glue it together. The glue won't really do much, I don't think, but it's worth doing. Um, and that will stop it kind of rocking back and forwards. Um, and hold it tight, especially when we brace between the two legs as well. So we need to cut 
this shelf and this splay on here. Um, bit of a compound cut. So I'll try and explain this. So I'm going to flip it over now. Make sure your legs go in the right way. Splaying outwards, you don't want it splaying in. So we're going to splaying outwards. And I've labeled this one up as B. So as you can see for now, oh, drop the pencil. As you can see, um, it's going the right way. So, we're gonna, so what you could do, if you knew the splay, you could cut a prop and put it there, and then you could just mark alongside it. But we're not gonna do that. We'll pretend we don't know, we haven't got another sawhorse to copy. So we're gonna run a pencil line on the inside there, and we're gonna do the same across there. Now, this bevel set for this should be the same angle as what we wanna cut up there. So we wanna step in half an inch there, and step in an inch there. Um, so either 12 mil and 25 mil, or half an inch and an inch. And what we wanna do, so we wanna come like that with the bevel, and then could use the measuring gauge on that bevel. We'll go half an inch there. And then we'll do the same on this top cut but we won't cut this top. We'll leave it long and we'll trim it off afterwards. But on that one there, we're gonna go an inch. And then we're gonna join the two lines up and we're gonna have the line go straight down. Doesn't matter too much. And up to the top. And then we'll square that line down there. And we'll do the same on the other side now. So we've got it going that way. So it's going to have to continue going that way. If you get this the wrong way around, it's not very easy. And then that line should work down there as well. Okay, so we've got that. And we're going to cut all that out. Now and we're going to leave this bit long. We can trim that off once it's glued up. So I've got a vise. You could. I think I would actually, if I hadn't taken my other sawhorse apart, put this on your sawhorse, kneel and saw it. But I'm gonna put it in the vise now and uh, cut this out. Right, so that fits nicely. Might fit a little bit. Um, you can see we've got the, the right splay. If I get the other one as well, that I cut. You can see then that they line up quite nicely. Okay, oh, it's hard to do <laughs> with no screws in it. So, need to cut the other two legs now. Yeah, they line up nice. And um, get them sorted, and then I can think about get, fixing it all together. Okay, so I've got them all cut. This one isn't actually perfect. So, it's dead easy though to kind of get this a bit looking a bit better. I can just push this together now and show you where it's not perfect. So there's a bit of a gap on this side. Not huge, I admit. But all I'm gonna do, get my pencil, which is about the same thickness, there, and then just run that pencil up from that to nothing, and across there. And I, I know I've just got to take that off now with the, with the chisel or the saw, and um, that should get it nice and tight. Excuse the chickens, they're mad. made it worse. Let's have a look. So it looks like just a tiny bit more at the middle. So it's looking all right. It's not looking too bad. But yeah, just a tiny bit there. So I'll just do that. And then next stage, we can look at putting these legs together. Okay, so let's look at putting this together now. So 
all the legs are marked up and fitted to their appropriate joint. And so what I'm going to do is put two little crosses roughly in the middle of that. Um, you could stagger them actually, so they're not going in the same point of the grain. And then with a cordless drill, I'm just going to do two pilot holes. Obviously not just for the first piece of wood. And I'm going to count the sink as well. Slip off, get my hand. Go plenty deeper with the counter sink. And I'm going to do that with all four of them before I put any glue on. Um, so we don't get in a mess. Notice how I'm screwing in the same plane as the base is rather than kind of perpendicular to the legs, if that makes sense. Okay, so to fix them together, I'm going to use these Torx screws, which are 5 by 70s They've got a nice Torx head on them, you can see that there, which I find hold together, well, don't come out quite as easy as the PZ ones. We'll just put some glue on there. And obviously this relies a little bit on your joints being right, because that's how we get the right angle. Make sure it's nice and tight, nice and tight up there. You know what, I'm going to countersink that a bit more. I'm going to use the drill to countersink it this time. Slurp having it sunk below. First leg on. Let's do this one. got the makings of a sawhorse now so now we're going to get a bit of ply you could use a bit of solid timber I've got lots of uh, scraps of 10 mil 10, 9 mil ply even uh, I'm going to cut on there now fix it with some smaller screws and then we can cut those bits off the top flip it over and get the legs sorted okay so I've got some 9 mil ply here um, I've got some off cuts like this so I'm just going to hold it there now get it flush with the underside Draw a line, draw another line. And actually, I'll probably step that in ever so slightly. No point having it right to the edge. I and mean, actually, that cut will do the other, the side of the other one. I'll cut those now. Right, so I've cut a nice little brace there. And what I've done. I've started all the screws, it's much easier to do than having to hold it there once we can move. These screws are some 4x35s.
Next job, saw them off flush of the top. What we can do, oh, we can put a piece of card on there, run the saw against it, and then just plane it off afterwards. Hands are fussy, you're feeling. Or we could just saw it off. I'll do this, and then we're gonna sort the, le the legs out. Although, because I cut all these the same length, it doesn't wobble. Um, but we wanna get them flush with the floor. Okay, so I've taken the top off, just with a handsaw, and as you can see, uh, it's ready to go. So, all we need to do now is cut the bottoms off flush with the floor, or maybe just leave a little bit off, depending on what I've got. So, the height of your saw horse really depends on how high you like to saw. So, I've known people with a lot higher saws, uh, saw horses. I like to have my knee on my work, so, so the top of my, bottom of my knee is kind of ideal for me. But also, I'm kind of used to using these saw horses that I've always had, and they work out about 520 to the top of this bit. And then what we'll do is we'll put a cover strip on top of that. So we can do it two, one of two ways. You can pack it up all level off your bench. So that's 540, that's 540. So my, this would work. So I'd then get a piece of wood, draw around it, and uh, then cut those off. Alternatively, if, it don't, if it's quite hard to pack up, what you can do is measure to this point, measure your 520, measure a 520, and then connect it all up um, with a straight edge holding it and do that. But I'm going to do it the other way because it's not far off. So I draw around them now. Not rocking. Let's go with that. Hopefully, as long as you're accurate with your cuts. It should mean the sauce doesn't wobble. So with a compound cut like this, obviously start the saw on the corner where you can see it, put your head over. No wobble. Finish the sawhorse. Dead simple to build. One of the great things about this design as well, it could be carried up a ladder really easily with no hands. So we used to do a roofing, take a couple of these up, and you could do all your cuts on it. I'm gonna give it a coat of linseed oil now, and then I'm gonna put a sacrificial top on here that can be cut into or whatever, if you're using a router or a circular saw. Doesn't matter too much, but I don't wanna damage this if I can help it. Um, one of the great thing, other great things about this design was that you can have it, because of where the splay is, you can go right up against the wall. Um, and also what we used to do sometimes was with the cover strip, was have a piece with a V on the end you could wedge a door into if you're playing in a door and stuff. Obviously we use power tools a bit more now, so it's not quite so useful. And then um, you can see how strong this is and how sturdy, you know, and I can do the same again. Go right on the edge, doesn't tip over. Um, so, kind of ideal. Okay, if you've liked my video about making a traditional sawhorse, then please give it a like below and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.